so you know we logan um russell i'm not even sure logan were you here when he did tucker's tips in the office or is this a first Okay, good, 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 good. Um, yeah, so basically what we get, do is Bill comes prepared to, you know, talk about some things I'm, I'd love for Bill and, and Katie. Uh, maybe we'll do that first, Bill and Katie. Why don't you guys give us an update on just how things are going with, um, you know, complying with all the regulations. I know you guys have got things, uh, you know, moving forward, given your situations. Bill, I've talked a number of times about your guys set up with the alcove and uh, people sitting outside in the alcove while your people are inside the office looking through the window and they talk on the phone like they're visiting somebody in prison. Um, and uh, uh, and Katie, I, I know that you guys are doing stuff that from time to time curbside. You guys were great with me when I refinanced. Um, I never I never was in the building and thankfully my, my house isn't that far away from Charlottesville Settlement. So Katie even dropped stuff off in my mailbox one day just to um, so I didn't have to, uh, you know, chance it because that was early on in the, in the craziness. But why don't you guys give us an update? Because um, I think, I don't think it's passed yet, but there's even a situation where the county is going to close for a few days, right? Because of uh, uh, their city. renovations. The city, city, I'm sorry, city, close. city. Yeah. The city so why don't you guys just go ahead and kind of give us an update and then we'll get into some questions. The, the city's closing from Monday, August the 17th through the Friday the 21st. So that whole week we won't record in the city. And as a result, probably recordings the week before, the Friday is uh, 14th will be, dip, you know, you probably don't want to do a closing on Friday the 14th because if you can't get recorded on Friday the 14th, you're stuck and you can't record wow. for a week. 10 days and wow. you're going to have to send the money back and start over. So, so Oof. we're telling everybody if you're closing that week, you ought to, the latest you ought to plan a closing is for the uh, Wednesday, the 12th, just so it'll get done before by Friday, you know, a Thursday yeah, get closing that. probably will work, but maybe not. And then I'll the other thing to we're everybody saying, today. Yeah. And the other thing we're saying is, and, and we probably will send out a real Tucker SIP. We've just been so swamped. We, we just haven't done them this, this uh, summer. The other thing we're saying is because of all the backlog on Monday, trying to close on Monday and record is probably going to be kind of difficult because there are probably going to be some documents that will be lined up to be recorded ahead of everybody. You know, somebody did a refinance on Wednesday, the, the, the 19th. You know, it would be recorded on Monday the 21st. So any, uh, uh, Monday the uh, 24th. 24th. So anyway, it's it's going to create a it's going to create havoc. Katie, have y'all felt the same way? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, because the city doesn't do e recordings. All the other places do for the most part, but not the city. So there's no way getting around this. Yeah, and something will go wrong with the move. <laughs> it won't be ready on the 24th anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, again, I think that's thing, really important. And, and Bill, I mean, if you get something out, we'll certainly forward it out to everybody. But um, for those of you guys who are on the call or listen to the recording, I'll, I'll, I'll get something put out today, uh, not only by email, but I'll put it in the agent only Facebook page as well so that everybody has that information. Because that's, you know, that's key. We're, you know, hopefully, <laughs> you know, I mean, right now, in the last couple of weeks, contracts. In fact, Logan, when when is yours supposed to close, Logan? Oh, sorry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, Tell us by and, fingers, Logan. Give us fingers. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or or put it in the chat box. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. there you go. There you go. Um, anyway, uh, you know, point being is, anybody that wrote a contract at the end of June, beginning of July, and didn't know this they may have put it in there just and and nobody's told them uh so we got to get that we got to get that message out so thank you for reminding me about that yeah and um in our office we're making them wear a face mask and if they show up without them we're giving them to them um we will do them in the car uh we only schedule one at a time 
and my receptionist is a clean freak. Thank you, Jesus. And she wipes down everything the second someone leaves and uh, we sanitize pens and then we tell them to take them with them or we throw them away. So, is her name Ann Adams? Is no. your name Ann Adams? <laughs> no, we have Bert, but she could be Ann Adams' uh, long lost sister. <laughs> oh, no kidding. I mean, I, you know, I go in the office early in the morning when nobody's there and Ann comes in and I'll hear noises and I'll go out and she's out disinfecting everything as she comes in the door. Uh, and I think she it disinfects on her way out as well, even though the cleaning people are coming in. So uh, yeah. we're really, we say really Bert's very perfume is Lysol. <laughs> mango, mango smell or, or uh, lemon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's sort of a lavender, I think, but yeah, yeah Lysol. Yeah. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Well, um, let me just kind of, a couple different things. Um, we've got this going on right now. Uh, and one of the questions is, is uh, from a, a deal that Logan's working on. Uh, she's got a listing, a possible listing from an estate attorney. Um, so I have twofold for you, Bill and Katie. One is um, the person has been, we've been told by the state attorney that, that the person has, the person who Logan's dealing with has the, the authority to sign a listing agreement and to sell the property. Um, and I've told Logan that that's great that he's told us that, but it'd be great to have something in writing in the file to back that up, that um, there's a legal, uh, something in writing that says that. But the second question, uh, add on question to that is, am I correct that because it's an estate, the disclosure is not necessary because I'm pretty sure estates and bank owned properties are exempted from the disclosure. So those are uh, two, two questions to start out. So is the sale, you say there's a state attorney involved, is, which sort of doesn't sound normal like you would have, if you're having a sale from an, an estate, usually the court will appoint uh, someone uh, let me, to- let me, let me back up. So a uh, person has died, I think a brother, it doesn't yeah. really matter, but a relative has died. There are two surviving heirs. The one surviving heir supposedly has the authority to sell the property per the person who dies, died, uh, will. So um, that's that's the story. Oh, okay, so it's so we're looking in the box. So, oh, from Logan, brother is a sole heir at law. Whoops, it just went away. I'll get it for you. Brother is a sole heir at law, according to a state planning attorney. Okay, well, then, then the brother has the authority to sell, so the brother can go ahead and, um, and sign. He, he's going to be selling, probably if the will is probated, he's selling as executor. So he has the authority to sign everything, uh, so I don't know why he wouldn't sign a disclosure. Okay, okay. But, 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 should, but, he, but Logan should still be asking for, for written notification that he has that authority, right? Yeah, Versus what, just what would trusting happen? What, the, what the attorney says? Well, you could ask for a copy of the will if you wanted and a copy of the qualification that he's gone down and qualified at the court to, to yeah. be appointed executor of the estate. Then you'd have official documentation. Yeah. But that's what, if Katie was representing the buyer, uh, that's what she would be asking for, for her to determine that the, uh, that the, this person, this relative could sell. Yeah. And the will and would need just, it. Would the will, no. Go ahead. And the will usually would give authority to sell. Otherwise, whoever the heirs are, are the ones who sell. So Bill, she's saying in the chat that there is no will. Oh, well then, and then that's different. That then, <laughs> then what happens under the intestacy laws of the state of Virginia? It goes to the next of kin, which would be a spouse if there's a spouse. It would be children if they're children. If they're none of those, then it goes to oh, we got children. Look to the chat box. Spouse, okay. children. This is a brother. Spouse, and there, there children, is no, there is no spouse. There are no children. Then parents, and if there are no parents, then it goes to siblings. And right. it goes to siblings if they predeceased, it goes to those siblings' um, uh, children. Correct, Katie? Yes. I'm enjoying yeah, so playing charades. I'm, I'm enjoying playing charades with Logan. 
<laughs> so, so you, you know, it may not be just one brother has authority to sell because there's no will directing him to sell. So really, it's the heirs who own the property. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what bit. that's what Logan's saying. Yeah, all and Logan's also say. saying, and Logan, August twenty sixth uh, closing date should be fine. You got a couple extra days, and it wouldn't record till the twenty sixth or twenty seventh anyway. So you should be fine with that one. So yeah, and but you well, don't you don't so but the, the getting the disclosure signed uh, makes sense to do that, right? Yeah, I mean, what happens a lot we see with estates is somebody is sort of takes charge who's maybe not an executor, just the brother that's handling everything, but he may not be the only one that needs to sign a deed, but the listing agreement gets signed by him. Uh, the disclosure gets signed by him. Uh, and technically it's not really every, you don't have everyone's signature that you need, but, but I'm amazed the number of times we'll get contracts with only one heir has signed it when we've got to have, four others join in. Uh, so what ought to happen, Logan, is you, you should get whoever is gonna represent the seller, get, get to that lawyer or Katie as quickly as possible so we can determine who are the people that need to join in a deed. Yeah. So the- And, the, the, and it's I'm not, sorry, that, one more thing. It's not that sure. they have the authority to sell. What happens, when you die without a will is, or when you die with the will, title in Virginia, we call it drops like a rock. Title immediately passes at the moment of death to whoever the heir is or are, whoever the heirs are. The problem is you have to prove who that is by separate documentation, like a, a real estate affidavit or a list of heirs or some, some documentation so that the title company, the Katie's of the world, can determine who are the right people that need to sign the deed. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they require two disinterested parties to sign an affidavit. Yeah. So an add-on to that, we've got another situation where um, we're representing a buyer. The buyer is divorced. Um, the divorced couple needs to sell their house. Um, and and the the wife uh, is the one who actually is living in the house and uh, is getting ready to sell the house. Uh, even though they're divorced, um, if he's still on the deed, he needs to be he needs to be signing that listing as well. Is that correct? Yes. If they have a divorce decree or something that says that one or the other gets the house, then usually they do a deed. Uh, subject to the separation agreement. If not, then um, yes, they both have to sign the listing. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in writing that that changed the the deed from when they bought it. So it seems to me that 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 the that the person that we represent, the buyer, the guy, still has to be signing that that listing agreement, even if he's going to let his wife list whoever she wants to list with, and that kind of thing. Yeah, he still holds an right. interest in the property. He's got to. Okay, okay, good, good, good. That's that's I mean, helpful. If, if he didn't want, if he didn't want to do it, then he could simply do a deed to her, and then it would only be her having to sign. Yeah. Well, in this particular situation, I'm glad for the answer because we we kind of like to, because we're trying to help this guy buy a house. We're kind of want the house when it goes on the market to be at the right price, <laughs> and the only leverage this guy's going to have is at the time he signs that listing once he signs it he's he's pretty much out of it so to get those those kind of things in place on the listing agreement so that he's willing to sign it i think is the only leverage that he'll have in that scenario so i, I thought that was right but i wanted to confirm it with you guys what, what about what michael what about how the money is going to be divided they have an agreement about that or are you going to end up with a battle at the end of who gets what no i think that's i think that was part of the divorce agreement you know i think However, oh, they, I, I think, I think that she, she gets the pro that she gets the proceeds. I'm not sure, but I think so. Yeah. Most, 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 most attorneys in the divorce arena know enough about real estate that they'll usually put some language in a separation agreement that gives us a roadmap of who does what and who gets what. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then the last one, then I'll let you kind of take over. We had a really interesting situation that I think everybody 
uh, would be interesting to hear about. We were, in the, we were representing the purchaser on a property, and uh, um, when it when everything we got everything negotiated and everything, um, we found out that after the fact that there were two people that were allowed access to the property. It's a pretty significant piece of property, and they had an old kind of rundown cabin on it. And the person who had sold the property to the, the, the sellers had worked out something with them that he, that she could come back anytime she wanted to, to revisit the cabin. Cause it was, a emo, you know, an emotional nostalgic situation. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't recorded in the deed. Um, but when we got closer to closing, um, we found out that there was, there was that. And then there was another person who was allowed to come ride her horse on the property. Um, so it almost killed the whole deal because the buyer thought, well, wait a minute, I don't want people coming on my property unannounced. Uh, the good news is it all worked out. Um, our agent did a great job of settling the buyer down. Uh, we worked it out for the, the buyer to meet the woman who wanted to visit the cabin. It turns out she hadn't been there in five years. So they just, they just had a gentleman, they, they agreed to a gentleman's agreement. That if she did want to come, she had to give them notice and it had to be at a time that was appropriate for them. Kind of, I'm not exactly sure what happened with the horse rider, but anyway, um, how do you, how do the agents protect uh, from that happening? Obviously, we've talked about once they choose Charlottesville Settlement or they choose uh, Tucker, um, you know, sooner you can get the title work done, the better. But obviously, if you're getting a, if you're on the listing side of it, that's a that's the benefit of going to one of you guys because we can ask to do that pre sale search title search to see if there's anything there because to me that i think quite honestly I think the listing agent was outside the lines in regards to disclosure because as much as we could tell he was aware of at least one of the agreements but never disclosed it to anybody and that was an agreement that was inside the four corners of the property right yeah. so with that how would how do you go about you know uh, protecting a, a, a client from running into that and not knowing about it till after the fact. I'm not sure. I'm not sure there's a good way to do it because it, it's, it's of record, whatever that those agreements were, were recorded in the clerk's office. That makes it public knowledge. Not that anybody over goes looks, but, but even, even if, Katie or I had been asked to do a for the listing to do a one owner search more than likely that easement is further back in the chain of title and we would have never found it anyway doing a one owner search well he said that it was uh, never recorded that it was just a gentleman's agreement yeah yeah but then it's, so there's no way we oh, would have okay. no and and quite honestly it's not enforceable you could just say no thank you we're not going to I'm the new owner I'm not going to honor it yeah yeah, but couldn't you, um, well, where was I going on this? Um, if, if you did want that to be the case, uh, you, you would want to make sure something got recorded. So let's just say I'm the person that rides a horse, which of course is not going to be me, but let's just say it is me. Um, then I would, if they gave me that permission, I would want to have them sign something that I could go down and, and, and record it uh in the courthouse mm -hmm. right so that i had a legal document verifying that i had that right correct and right. then it was it was right. whatever uh right of survivorship or whatever you call it that i could i, I had that until i died it was right? in perpetuity or yeah. whatever yeah yeah it would, it would be like a, a license you've got a license to write on the prop to, to write on the property as long as you're alive and if, once that's recorded then a, a buyer is on notice that, that that's uh that's part of the chain of title. Your, your, the VAR contract has uh, in the title section has language that you agree as a buyer to buy the property subject to all easements, restrictions, uh, CCRs, road maintenance agreements, whatever they are, as long as they do not, uh, I think, unreasonably restrict your ability to inherit, inhabit the property as a residence. I think that's some boilerplate language. I may have it not quite right. So one would argue that somebody having a right to uh, to go on the property and ride a horse may restrict your use of the property as a as a residence. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Bill, little, let me take little, let me take it let me take it one more step, and this is for Russell Johnson's uh, uh, vantage point. If 
if you live next door to a house, a property that you would like to buy if they ever wanted to sell it, same thing, right? You would work out a right of first refusal, whether you paid for that right or they did it just gratis. And as soon as you had something signed and notarized, that would something you would definitely want to have recorded, right? So that if they ever wanted to put the house on the market and somebody searched the title, they say, well, wait a minute, you got, you got an encumbrance here. You got to deal with, you got to give this guy 30 days beforehand, right? Right or first you, you refusal. Would want to, you'd want to record it either as an option or a right of first refusal. Somehow you'd want to get it a record. Now, now as a lawyer, I, I hate those. Because <laughs> Me too. if you think about it, somebody has an option or a right of first refusal and you follow the steps and you've got to give them 30 days notice and you give them a copy of the contract, whatever you have to do to have them decide if they want to exercise their right of first refusal. And they say, no, I'm not going to exercise it. So now how do you prove that they got that notice? How do you prove that they didn't get decide to exercise it? And the problem is normally Katie would require that person with the right of first refusal to sign something saying I've waived my right of first refusal, but that person's mad because they don't want to, you know, they're unhappy uh, and they don't want to sign it. Now you got a cloud on title. Correct, Katie? Right. Uh, they're going to have to join in the deed in order to clear the title. So as a seller, you don't want to give away a right of first refusal or an option because it creates a potential problem down the road. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Great. All right. Those are the ones that I, I had on my uh, notepad. Uh, it's, it's, it's all you now, Bill and Katie. Well, I was and gonna, questions, was questions from the agents, too. Sure. Yeah, you were talking about the one we talked about before about the person writing on property and how they were able to, to get out of a contract uh, or could get out of a contract. Years and years ago, and I think I can disclose this because I think it's public knowledge, Wayne Newton wanted to buy Castle Hill. This is like 30 years ago. Uh, and he signed a contract to buy Castle Hill. Uh, and then uh, he decided he didn't want to buy it. I don't, he does Arabian horses or something, and I guess he decided that this isn't a great place for Arabian horses or something. So he wanted to get out of the contract. So I got hired to figure out how, how to get him out of the contract. And what, what we discovered is, of course, Castle Hill has some, some cemeteries on it. And, and then people have access to the cemeteries. And it was quite a prominent cemetery with famous, you know, with pretty, you know, some of the Jefferson people buried in it. So we were actually able to use that saying this is going to restrict his ability to you know be safe and secure on this property if anybody can come on it who's a member of the family to go visit these this you know 30 grave sites or whatever so you, you we were able to use that to to get him out of the contract um wow and did you get invited did you get invited to a show in las vegas after that no, i did not i did not never got to meet him either um, oh too bad the uh, the only thing I wanted to kind of go over w was something, and, and Katie can also chime in on this, because we're all e-recording now a lot more, instead of going to the clerk's office, we're actually e-recording. The, the clerks are now backing up with, when we e-record, when they verify that it's, it's, it's approved. So we'll, we'll put something online to e-record it. Uh, let's say yesterday at, at, at two o'clock and by the end of the day we don't know if the clerks recorded it yet because they haven't sent out what's it called a verification or something katie they, they the clerk sends you something letting you know it's been now docketed so what's happening is we may do a closing in the past we would do a closing on monday and hopefully record and disperse monday but maybe on tuesday at the latest we would record and disperse now what's happening we'll close on monday We'll go e-record on Tuesday. It won't get docketed till Wednesday. So we're not recording now like we used to, recording and dispersing as quickly as we used to. I'm, I'm seeing that a lot more. I don't know, Katie, if you're seeing that. Yeah, actually, um, I have discovered what the problem is. The problem is not the counties. The problem is the bandwidth with the e-recording company. And we had two that got hung in between, like the county couldn't see it and we were just showing that it had sent and it was hung. And so I ended up having to cancel those two and actually make an appointment and go and record it at, at Greene County. 
but um, they are increasing their bandwidth. So hopefully this will pick back up. They're supposed to have that done by the middle of next week. But um, Fluvanna County has a two o'clock cutoff time. So if we don't get it uploaded by two o'clock, they're not recording it that day. So anyway, as a, as a realtor and, and doing the closings and discussing when you're going to have that keys, that, that, that money being able to be dispersed to your seller isn't going to be as instantaneous as it has been in the past. Yeah. So y'all may, you know, need to arrange, you know, when, when keys are going to be handed out early possessions or, you know, obviously during, uh, during the Sheriffsville city shutdown, I think early possessions are going to become kind of an important tool for you guys uh, yeah. to get people with properties while you're waiting to get the closing to happen. But, but yeah, maybe once clearly, everybody's performed what they need to and we're to the point of uploading. And folks, if you, if, if any of you are on here, listen to the recording. Um, if you're looking at a, uh, early occupancy, please talk to me first. Um, I, I can kind of guide you. And if it, if it gets beyond my pay grade, I can go to Katie and Bill, but, uh, you know, that the buyer needs to, you know, do the walkthrough. If they're moving into the house, the buyer needs to do the walkthrough and they've got to um, give up their rights to whatever happens in the next few days before it actually goes to record, that they've done their walkthrough, that they've accepted the property in its condition. And, and from here on out, it's, 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 it's up to them. And then secondly, man, you want to make sure that the loan commitment's in place, that the money's in place, whatever. You do not want to let somebody in the house and then something goes squirrely on the, on the loan where they can't close because now they're in the house and try to get them out. Um, is, is, is not an easy process. And make sure that your seller maintains his homeowner's insurance. Don't let him cancel it or early because if that thing burns down, it's on him. Yeah, that's a you know, really good point. And I don't know about you guys, uh, Bill and Katie, but I, I recommend that um, nobody cancel their homeowner's insurance until they actually get their money. Uh, because if they've gotten their money, their equity from the property, that means that it went to record. Uh, exactly. And even if you even if you forget and don't notify the assurance company for a couple of days afterwards, you let them know when it closed. You send them something that shows them shows the disclosure, and they'll prorate um, the yes. refund back to you based on that day. I, I don't know of an insurance company. I haven't heard of an insurance company yet that doesn't do that. No, they all do. They all do. Yeah. In fact, I, I've sold something and forgot to cancel my insurance. And about six months later, I remembered and I called the company and they prorated back to the day of closing. So we, yeah. we tell everybody, you know, never cancel thinking you're going to close on this date. Wait until you know it's, it's, it's over, it's finished. And then you can call your agent and backdate the cancellation to the actual day of closing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And again, goes without saying that you're the seller. You keep the you keep the all the utilities on uh, until the whether if it's a pre occupancy, you, you know you keep the utilities on in your name until they actually uh, substantiate that they've switched them over uh, to the to the new buyer. Um, but you know just, you're responsible or the seller's responsible for making sure all that stuff's in place, not only for the home inspection, but also for the pre closing walkthrough whenever that occurs. So questions from you guys. Come on. <laughs> I just wanted to say, uh, thank you, Mr. Tucker for all your hard work on Fraser Cove. That was quite the, uh, quite the, uh, transaction to say the least that was interesting so thank you so much well you're welcome <laughs> so that one got uh, closed okay Russell yes sir yes sir that one finally finally closed it was I believe it was scheduled to close the ninth and I think the what was the 21st or 22nd finally happened so mm. um it's uh, or not the 21st I guess the 18th is that, or so. it was, is that it was the a one with, is that the one with that crazy title company Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> it, it's it's um, it recorded yesterday finally. Yes. They finally they, yes. they took took their time recording, but it's done. 
Yeah. So the twentieth. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. That also, was, uh, Russell, I, without mentioning like, without mentioning any names, is that the one that started with the other company and we had all the delays, or is that the second one? Um, no, this was the original company that we had started with, um, and um, uh, and there was there was some delays with that one. So um, it was, and then the then the what held it up at the end the appraiser went there and didn't realize five acres had been cut off of the actual the lot size so he appraised wow. it for a 17 instead of 12 and we didn't find that out till that my clients were actually on their way to go sign so that guy oh. i mean it was just one thing after the other i mean just kept dragging out kept dragging out and it's uh i have a very interesting chain of emails if you ever want to read some they're pretty funny um you know now now it's funny but it, it, it was very stressful on everybody's on everybody so but um but uh but yes just thank you so much mr tucker and i have another one coming for you so i will not be using anybody but you so okay but but if you have to use a, a title a settlement title company don't use that company you used out in Louisa. I won't name their name out in Louisa. Uh, but, uh, I just wanted to say that, you Bill. Oh, my God. You just took it out of my mouth, Bill. I know which one you're talking about. Oh, my God. Oh, of course you know which one he's talking about. Oh. We all do. Oh, my God. Yes. It was thank, like giving birth. Thank you for I'm not going to give you the name, but it starts with an L. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. But it uh, it, it, it really got nasty and really just uh, just almost embarrassing on their part at the end there for them. Um, it, it was I don't I don't know how it could have gone any worse, but, but it recorded so it, I'm happy. The my clients are extremely happy, so that's all that matters. My, I guess. my favorite was after all that we went through when they finally sent the title binder like the day of closing, uh, the day before closing, it was wrong, and we had to go get them to correct it. After all that. Yeah, but anyway, and, and then of course the, the the deed of trust that was on that they wanted to they wouldn't tell us where they would deed of trust were and there were some judgments weren't on our people anyway, but they waited until the day before closing to tell us about the deed of trust and the judgment. It, it was it was well anyway, it's over. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> moving moving right along to the next one, that's for sure. This is what you call a learning experience. This is yeah, this sure. is what you call a complex learning experience. Yes. Yeah, right. for sure. Yes. Logan, Logan asked a question. She posted a question. I saw it real quickly about how quickly can you do a cash closing? Uh, assuming the people do not want a physical survey uh, of the property, it's as quickly as Katie can get the title work done. So it depends on and where right it is. Right now, it depends on where the property is and whether we have to make and, an appointment and, to search the title. Or if there's back title, if you can find back title, you know, we could close in a week if we had to. But, but it, it really, you want, you don't want to, you don't want to not get a title search done or get title insurance. And that actually brings me to my next point I had written down. Well, uh, before you move on, Tucker, uh, we can't do anything before the second week of August at this point. We're slammed. Okay. So probably a cash closing is not going to be that quick because it could be in the past. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true for, for everybody that I've, I've heard from. And, and Jay and, and Carl were saying that the other day when we had the uh, our listing uh, tour uh, Tuesday. And by the way, folks, we'll have another one next Tuesday because we're going to have four or five properties that have been signed up. But, um, you know, they, they, they would rather, I mean, they will, they'll do their darndest to do it in 30, but they're not going to guarantee it. They want to see 45 days from ratification, not from contract date, but from when it's actually ratified that somebody can send them the contract uh, for all the different reasons, not just from the lender side of it, but the appraisal, the survey, all those, the, the, the title work, uh, they 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 really want to see 45 days on that but but like they said logan on a cash deal you know you're in a very different situation and especially uh you know if they're comfortable with the price they they may even waive the appraisal um because of the fact that it's a cash deal the lender doesn't is not involved and they feel like that you know the comps that you've provided them says that the value is there uh that that certainly cuts back time but but i think the real important message here is don't assume it, you know, reach out to Katie and say, I'm writing a cash contract. They want to close as quickly as possible. Um, 
what reasonably is the right time to tell them? So today's July 23rd. She's saying, you know, mid-August. Well, <laughs> mid-August is, is April 14th, folks. She's, we've already just told each other that we can't do anything after 8 slash 12, right? So that could mean that a cash deal could go five weeks be, because of this exception. If it, the, it, of course, it has to be in the city. But if it was in the city, it was a cash deal, it's not going to be two weeks. It's going to be three weeks. But, oh, hello, it's not going to be three weeks because we've got this closing. So it's going to be more like four, four and a half weeks. So really important, whoever your provider is, whoever you're using for your closings, to, to check with them first. And the same thing with the lender. You know, you know tell, me, tell me what I should put in here so that when I write a contract and we get it ratified, I don't have to go back and deal with That's just extra time. You're going to have to spend an aggravation. Whereas if you've done your homework up front, you don't have to go back and do an amendment and do those kinds of things. So, And a lot of that depends on where the property is because like Orange County, there's not the online access there. You have to make an appointment. You can only have two hours at a time. I mean, it's ridiculous. We've pretty much said Orange County is dead to us at this point because it's so <laughs> awful. But, um, <laughs> but the rest of them are being fairly easy to deal with. It's just that you have to make your appointment time and they don't let in but one person at a time. So it may be three days before you can get an appointment. So that does make it a little hard. Um, but I mean, the, the amount of business, it's amazing. We're actually up from last year. Yeah. Yona has a question about homeowners Association. Yes, um, and <laughs> uh, it's 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 happening again and again, and I really wanted to go ahead and make sure that I am understanding it correctly. HOA docs were delivered yesterday to the agent, and I just got notification that they delivered it to her client today. Are we? within the timeline we should be doing this or does it need to go directly from the purchaser's agent to the client on that particular day when she received it? I, I don't remember what the, the, hasn't the contract been changed, the VAR been, is, or has the law been changed a little bit? And well, so Michael, that's, that's, that's where the confusion comes in, Bill. That's really where the confusion comes in because I was always under the understanding the moment anybody picks up that packet, the clock starts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, no, that's, that's what that's I thought. Not, that's not, well, that, that's if not the correct. Agent is the, not anybody, yeah. but in the contract, it, you know, if you put in that, it, it, if you write the purchaser's name in, then the clock doesn't start ticking until the purchaser receives it. If you put the agent's name in, uh, then it starts when the agent uh, receives it, not the, not the receptionist or is there a whoever. place on the con Mike, is there, Michael, is there a place on the contract? I don't remember. Yes, there Did is. Put a name in? Yeah. Yes, there okay. is. But Yona, I would say this, um, it, you're right. It's, it's what we call the gray, right? It is. Um, you, you got it to the uh, attorney yesterday. I mean, the agent yesterday. If, if, if we're treating each other fairly, um, you know, thinking about in my sit in your situation, let's just say right. for the sake of discussion, Right. Somebody dropped it off at Ednam yesterday, but you right. didn't get into Ednam till today. Yeah. Um, and and but you 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 got a, you got a notification back that the purchaser got it today. I would give them three days from when the purchaser got it because they obviously they weren't they weren't being negligent. Um, and it's really the 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 buyer. We would want the same thing to happen with us. We want our buyers sure. to have three days, not two days. Sure. Sure. No, I but, understand that. But I think you're right that that in. In, in, you could be saying, well, you know, you received it yesterday, therefore you, you, your buyer now has two days, so we need this back, such and such. But I think that the, the key is, is to just be clear from the outset, when you, when she, when they, you got notification that, that the agent received the documents yesterday, you could have sent something saying, per the, your, the acknowledgement of your receipt, mm -hmm. the clock starts ticking today, and therefore it takes the gray out of it. If they want to fight you on that, they're going to fight you on it. But if not, you've notified them that, hey, you got it. And therefore, the contract says that the time starts today. Mm -hmm. But if, if that notice wasn't given, I, I, would, I would give them today and start, yeah. start it today. No, I, I, and, and I will do that, obviously, because I didn't say anything. But um, just, just yeah. for my own, per, you know, also 
communicating and oh. teaching moment, it would be good to know what this actually all means and how are we so, going to enforce it. <laughs> so, Yona, the other thing you could do, and this is a little bit sneaky, is you could write the other <laughs> agent's name in that box in the contract when you send it back. And okay. therefore, and if they don't notice that, um, then, you know, you've got it in there that Joe Schmo is in when they when Joe Schmo receives them that clock starts ticking and now you've got in the contract that when he got them so it would have started yesterday if it's blank it's gray but if you write his name in and and he doesn't come back and cross his name out and blah 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 now you've got uh the, the right chain of notice in the contract uh, I put in that it should be emailed directly to the purchaser the, that's fine too so so, well, it is what it is. Uh, thanks, Michael, for sharing. Yeah. And, no, it's a great question. Bill, thank yes, you, I, I, you're 100% right. There is, there is a new language in the, in the contract that's absolutely confusing, just to say. It is. How often do, do you guys have somebody terminate for HOA reasons? <laughs> Not too many times. Not too many times. Yeah. But I it mean, does happen. From our side... Yeah, it does. From our side as, as lawyers, we know that that's always a way, a get out of jail card, I call it. So if you haven't had that packet delivered, you wait for the packet and then you, you terminate. Uh, so usually that three days doesn't become an issue because you're terminating the minute you get the packet. Uh, uh, but, you know, obviously the, the HERCA is a whole nother, other <laughs> issue about oh, the time frame. Yeah, don't stuff. talk about HERCA, yeah. Well, okay, but at the I same time, and, and um, Logan and I had this conversation yesterday. Um, if you if you're getting a listing in a homeowner association that will let you get the package once you get the listing, uh, when the seller pays the money and whatever, get it right away. I mean, some homeowner association won't give it to you until you get a contract, but some will. If you you're getting it listed and the seller sends a notification in and sends the payment, that way when you ratify the contract and everybody's warm and fuzzy, you can hand the package right at the same time that you're sending, delivering the ratified contract and their three days starts right then. And therefore you keep it within the confines of a home inspection contingency if there is one. Yeah. The other thing I want everybody yeah. to remember is that you can order your title search before the appraisal and everything is done. That's one of the good things about our relationship with Ednam. Because if you wait until after the home inspection and the appraisal and everything else is done, you're running yourself short and, you know, if, if we're getting backed up, you may not close on time. And so I would much rather you send me the contract, let us do the search. If it falls apart, it falls apart. But at least we're ahead of the game. Yep. And if it falls apart, if you're using Ednam title, it falls apart, there's going to be no charge for the search. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay. You don't, lose, Got it. you don't lose anything. Got it. All right, Bill, you uh, had something yeah. else there. The only other one I had, and, and this actually happened today with between one of my paralegals and and, and, and Katie. Uh, oh, hey, we don't. Work, we're not going to. We're not solving any personnel issues on this call. No, no, no. I helped her. We're, yeah, we, we're we're we're. My law firm's representing a seller. We had contract number one. Katie uh, had had the buyer, so Katie produced a title policy for the buyer. Uh, to buy the property. I can't remember what happened, but the buyer didn't buy the property. In, in Katie's title policy, it uh, talked about the seller having a mortgage and, you know, pay off a mortgage and stuff like that, normal stuff. So deal falls through, uh, buyer, seller goes and list, relist it, gets a contract from agent number two. They use a different title company. The different title company comes back and says, uh, we've, we found, in addition to the deed of trust that your client has, we found an old uh, judgment from 50, 10 years ago, or 12 years ago, or eight years ago, but they found a judgment that Katie didn't find. And, and what, what happened, the reason Katie missed it, it, well, assuming it's a valid judgment, it's from a prior owner, so we're not sure it's a valid judgment anyway, but assuming it was, uh, what Katie did is she had the sell the 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 the, uh, 
she found a prior owner's policy. My, my, uh, my seller had gotten owner's title insurance. So Katie was able with that owner's title insurance just to search the title forward. And so she didn't see that old judgment that is either not real or it was missed. So having that owner's title policy meant that now I representing the seller can go to the new title company and say, look, we've got an owner's policy and there's this indemnity agreement between all the title companies. If you have an owner's policy, they'll indemnify each other if one of these old deeds of trust or old judgments actually turn out to be valid and somebody comes after somebody to try to collect money. So, so that's another great example of why you want your buyer to always get owner's title insurance. Yeah, Because it, it, it just, it cleans up anything in the past. If it comes forward from the past, it's going to resolve it. And Katie, now, again, just, we don't know. We don't Katie, know if just it's a valid yeah, um, great question, Yona. Yona's asking, uh, can you still add an owner's title policy on an existing home? So I answer that, but also, well, there's the answer, no, Yona, sorry. Um, but also, t tell them just, you know, percentage-wise, it's not that much more. The lender requires the title insurance. It, 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 what's the percentage that the buyer is? So it, it's, it's, it seems like a lot of money, but it, when you consider you have to pay the lender anyway, it's not that much more to protect yourself. It's not. Um, well, a lot of it depends on how much equity you have in the house because you're basically getting charged for the difference between the two. And um, usually, say you're getting a 90% loan, usually the title insurance for um, the owners is only going to be a couple of hundred dollars yeah. difference. Yeah. It's I not always, going to be I that always, much. I always tell people as a rule of thumb, think of it as a dollar a thousand more. So if you're buying something for $300,000 and you're getting a 90% a, a uh, loan, it's going to be 300 bucks. And, and remember, you're going to get a discount on owner's title insurance. So it may not even be that much if you're using Edinum title. Right. So just a lot of good reasons to get owner's insurance. Uh, yeah, guys, that's just, you know, again, another reason why the, the Edinum title is so important is not only do we get the service of these guys to do stuff like this and they're always readily available um, to work out problems just like Russell was talking about and the other reason is because Bill has a dog and do Bill has to feed the dog and so we got to help pay for that um, <laughs> There's no, Max. Th and then but the other part of it is there is there's um, not only are you going to get a discount but if 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 you're in a situation here's a great example if you're in a situation and let's say you're um, you're doing a deal with Stanley Martin. Stanley Martin wants you to use X, X uh, attorney. Um, if you do the Edna title disclosure and send that, um, Katie gets an opportunity to compete. And oftentimes, even if uh, Stanley Martin has a lower number, she'll, she'll compete so that your buyer gets uh, at least the lowest number, if not even less, plus you have the service. Um, uh, in regards to that, and I, we just had that. A friend of mine uh, bought a Stanley Martin home, and and I, I think Chip Chip Royer does most of their stuff, right? Katie? Yeah. And yeah. Chip is more than willing to to uh, have Katie uh, quote Edinum title, and and so our our buyer, I mean, he bought a eight hundred thousand uh, dollar Stanley Martin home, and and ended up using uh, Edinum title because of of what Katie did to make sure it was worth his while, and and. You know, he the buyer was a persnickety guy. He wanted to make sure he was getting his, you know, that it was it was worthwhile to him, and rightfully so. So yeah. And now with all of the fraud in the world, um, and I know Tucker's office sells a lot of these, is the enhanced policy because you hear on the radio about title lock and all this stuff. Well, the enhanced policy kind of does the same thing that that is. And so if you have somebody who is really concerned about fraud that's out in the world, um, the enhanced policy definitely is worth looking at. It's only about 20% more and it's worth it. And, and Bill, first of, all, first of all, Yona, you're absolutely right on a cash transaction for sure. Even though it's more because you, it's all your equity, you definitely want to be protecting your assets uh, when, it, when it comes to that situation. But uh, Bill, talk about that a little bit, the enhanced coverage. Does that cover more than just the property? Well, it, it, it has about 30 
additional things it does over regular owners. Katie could be a little more specific, but the things that I tell clients that are the, the points that, that I explain to them as to why they should get an owner's is uh, one of them is it includes an inflation rider. So if you buy something for 200,000, you're getting a good buy on it and it increases in value to 275,000 and then there's a complete title loss you're covered to up to three up to 50 percent of the of the purchase price so you'd have up to three hundred thousand dollars worth of title insurance uh, that's one one benefit uh, another benefit is it includes uh, uh, some zoning coverage which regular owners insurance doesn't include if they're encroachments or zoning issues there's some exception there's some uh, deductibles on the on the uh, coverage for zoning but it includes zoning coverage if you new construction or just any kind of, con, it's, it includes affirmative mechanics lien coverage. So if there's some mechanics lien problem in the future that didn't get discovered at closing, it's, it's protected for that. But the one I like is what Katie just mentioned, the identity theft. It's, you know, it, it, it basically, owner's title insurance will cover any identity theft. If the people selling the property didn't actually own the property, owner's title insurance covers that. That's identity theft. The sellers are pretending they're, you know, somebody else is pretending they're the sellers. But in the future, if somebody comes in and tries to uh, put a mortgage on your property or some kind of identity theft in the future, enhanced policy covers that. So you don't have to go pay for title lock, which is, I don't know, $35 a month or a year, or $50 a year, whatever it is. It's automatically included with your title insurance and your owner's policy lasts forever. So it, it's never going to go away. When you get ready to sell the property, you're still protected. And answer to Yona's question, no, you can't get title insurance if you didn't have it. But when you refinance that property, you can get it down. Uh, yeah. Right. So Katie, I'm, they'll, they'll I got enhanced. It in there. Katie, I got enhanced, right? When I refinanced? Uh-huh. I got enhanced when I refinanced. I'm asking... Like um, a professional, not you already have an owner's not? policy in place. So no, I did not upgrade your, your policy. I did not. I <laughs> okay. just did your okay. lenders. I didn't want to charge you more than I had to. <laughs> okay. Damn. But I don't know if you have enhanced or not. I'll go back and look. Yeah. 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 Yeah, keep this, and I guess we're refining. If I had represented you the closing, Michael, I would have tried to make sure you got enhanced. Because quite honestly, not only does it protect the buyer, but it protects me. Yeah. It uh, gives, you know, okay. just covers things that, hey, you can't blame me because, you know, you got title insurance. Let's go get Katie to fix the problem. Yeah. So yeah. then he tries to file a claim against me, which I really love. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much. No problem. All right. We enjoyed it. Everybody have to stay safe. Yeah. Thanks. I will. And Vincent, I'll send you the recording so you can send it out to everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. You. Bye. Bye, -bye. Hey, Thank you. hey, Bill, can you call me? I got a 911, if you wouldn't mind, please. <laughs> <laughs>